let's start with a little disclaimer. Um, this uh, this talk is an introduction introductionary talk, so we will make some simplifications, and we will not uh, go that far into details to make this talk more accessible for the people who are new to the uh, crypto community. So uh, let's start with the introduction. So my name is Adrian. And I'm a lead mobile developer on the uh, Tari Aura project, which is um, um, a mobile wallet for the uh, Tari token. And with me is a Brian, who is a Rust developer that is working on the, uh, our main project, which is the Tari. So yeah, I think that time is already ticking. OK, so, so let's start uh, with our presentation. So uh, we are living in a time uh, where um, where the online communication is in a crisis. So from the one hand, uh, the uh, service providers like Facebook and Google constantly want to uh, check our message and metadata connected to it to get get to get, to, to get some data from there. From the other hand, governments and international organizations uh, trying to uh, pass the law to, for example, uh, remove the encryption from, from the messages apps, all trying to plant a backdoor uh, into it. In such situations, uh, they basically create the, the window to our lives and homes that we cannot protect from. Of course, we are, have uh, apps, mobile um, messaging apps that are uh, privacy focused. Uh, Signal and the Apple iMessages are even used the quantum computing resistant encryption. But still, uh, companies was, are, and will be prone to external pressure. So, uh, from uh, we hear from time to time about the about such legislations, and we try to run away from the apps where, uh, where the backdoors or other security threats were discovered. But I think we, we should stop running away from that. But instead of that, we should try to find a more resistant solution. And I think that the right direction is to try to uh, create some kind of decentralized uh, messaging app. Um, so technically, to uh, to make a, a decentralized, a very simple decentralized uh, messaging app, we need only the few things. Uh, the first, we need to get rid of the elephant in the room, which is a service. The service makes everything much easier. But in the same time, uh, there are potential weak spots that it's prone to the data leaks or the extens uh, uh, um, the the pressure from the from the outside entities. So we need to definitely get rid of uh, uh, from our equation. So now we have another problem because now we are uh, unable to find other users that we want to talk with uh, over the network, because we don't have a, a, anything, uh, a proxy that will can lead us to that, that person. So, um, and uh, finding the users over the network is a quite a challenge. You know, the internet is a quite a wild place uh, where the whole networks are hidden behind the nets. The majority of devices use the dynamic IPs which change over time. And a lot of people have a limited access to the internet due to the firewall or other restrictions. Everything will be much easier if we put everyone who wants to uh, talk uh, with, with other users on the single network layer. Happily, we have a few uh, options here, which the most popular one is the Tor. Um, Tor not only put us on the uh, one single simple network level, but also do the way how they handle the, the package that go through their network. It's got, uh, give us an additional layer of 
uh, security. Okay, so, uh, so quick recap, how the Tor works. So, if you want to talk or send any data to the another person, you need to establish a circuit. Uh, that circuit needs to have uh, three nodes between you and the receiver. Then you get the public keys from those nodes, encrypt the data three times using these keys, giving uh, the three layer of encryption, and pass it to the first node. The first node is able only to peel off one layer of decryption and then pass it to the second node. The second node do the same, peeling out that second layer, pass it to the third one. And the third one is finally um, able to peel off the last uh, level of decryption, so that they basically decrypt the, the data and, and give it to the, to the receiver. This approach enforces that only that sender has a full set of information about the whole transaction. The first node is um, know the sender, uh, but doesn't know the receiver, and uh, is unable to uh, decrypt the data. The second node is like a John Snow. It doesn't know anything. It doesn't know the sender nor the receiver, <laughs> uh, no, and it, it, it's unable to, uh, to decrypt the data. The last node, uh, it doesn't know the sender, but know the receiver, and it's able to decrypt the data that will pass to the receiver. Um, yeah, so we are now able to, uh, to simplify our problem with the network connectivity, but we still need to be able to find uh, other people uh, on the network by getting their uh, onion address. So to do that, we need some kind of entity, some kind of uh, beacon that guides us through the network, and by using some kind of unique identifier, will provide us with the address to that user. And this uh, unique identifier, user identifier, cannot be something that you can uh, directly connect uh, to the real person. So it cannot be a phone number, it cannot be an email, and it cannot be even the, your username for some extent. It needs to be something random and easily disposable. Happily, uh, Tarin Network is working on the, uh, using the, the, the public keys that are random and easily disposable, so we can use it uh, to, uh, to identify ourselves with, within our, our network. Uh, but uh, as I am only the mobile developer, mobile lead, uh, I'm not have a full picture about about how how the, the uh, network is working. So I bring to the Brian, who is no far more better than than us regarding that. So Brian, please tell us how we can use the the network to 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 create a messaging app. Yeah. So. Atari is an L1 blockchain solution, uh, completely apart from any of the other big players. We're not a side chain or uh, anything like that. We are an independent chain. Um, we also have are developing an L2 on top of our L1. And whenever I talk about chat, the first question I generally get is, um, are you going to be putting the messages on the blockchain? <laughs> And uh, that is an unequivocal no. We're, we're not putting your messages on the blockchain at all. Uh, we actually aren't using the blockchain for anything related to chat. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about what the blockchain does or its services. What we actually need to do is go down a level and talk about how a blockchain works on your device in the first place. So when you download a Tari node or a wallet, the first thing it does is uh, uh, attempt to sync the existing blockchain, sync or download. And the way it needs to do that is, uh, well, as we've mentioned, the, we're in a serverless environment, so it needs to download it from your peers, the, the core of distributed networking, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, interactions. So back to Adrian's question, how is it you find peers on the network? We at Tari use uh, an emoji string as uh, an identifier. So it's just one big string of uh, emojis. It's pretty fun, uh, but it's anonymous. So it's not, as Adrian was saying, it's not attached to your email, your telephone number, or anything like that. 
From there, we use a, a complex mechanism called a distributed hash table, or a DHT. And I, again, am not about to explain a DHT in depth. Uh, that's a, a much bigger topic, but from a higher level uh, and uh, a bad analogy, it's kind of like an address book if you ripped it up and gave everybody a piece of that address book. So then you can always find someone who knows someone who will eventually have the address that it is you're looking for. Now, once we have all these connections available to us, uh, we don't just download the chain and call it Miller time. There's actually hundreds of communications a minute that's uh, going on under the hood. Uh, things like syncing additional blocks, uh, validating the consensus with the consensus mechanism to ensure the chain is valid. Uh, new peers are joining and requesting information about the chain. Uh, you're reorganizing the neighbors around you, the peers that you actually want to talk to for, for closer peers. So there's actually a whole lot of communication that's happening. You might just look at your wallet and see a balance, but under the hood, there's a lot of messages firing uh, back and forth constantly just to help the network thrive. Did you know in 1984, the SMS uh, messaging protocol was uh, conceptualized and designed to overlay on top of the traditional uh, voice line uh, for telecom companies? And when they did this, their goal was to utilize the uh, signaling channels that already existed for voice messaging uh, because it works very well already. The one thing they needed to add was uh, store and forward, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, the network can store something and then forward it on later. So if you send me a message and my cell phone is off, the network will hold that message and eventually send it to me when, uh, when I come or when I turn the phone online. From there, they had everything they needed. So it was relatively simple. Simple, it didn't actually come out until 1997, so it took a few years. Uh, but they, they had everything they needed, which is not unlike the Tari protocol now like we've just discussed with all the messaging that's happening um, under the hood, we, we have all these signaling channels that are in constant communication already. And we already have something along the lines of store and forward because any distributed uh, network these days requires that. It's a very basic function at this point that uh, needs to be implemented. So the network already has everything we need for secure uh, private messaging. All we really had to do was introduce a way for end users to put messages into these signaling channels. And that's kind of a cakewalk uh, at this point. That's not something that's particularly difficult to do. And the benefit of that is we get everything that the protocol already has. Um, every message that's being sent is already private. Uh, direct to peer or store and forward, it doesn't matter. And then on top of that, we're using the Tor network as, as Adrian has explained. So we've got an extra layer of security on there. And I think it kind of goes to show that the platform is really robust in that we were able to take the existing protocol with very minor amounts of change and implement something uh, as needed as secure private messaging. Um, being able to increase the functionality of what the protocol can offer and, and doing that with minimal changes, I think uh, really kind of talks about how well the platform or how robust the platform was in the first place. So, uh, and now with the secure chat we have, uh, we get everything that the network already had. Uh, the security, um, all the network communications, and yeah, it, uh, it just works really well. Okay, so now when you have a full picture, we can talk about the pros and cons uh, of, this, uh, of this approach. So the first and the main benefit of that is to adapt the, add the security, anonymity, and confidentially to the, to the messaging. Uh, the security is, uh, is provided by the Tor, and the rest of them are provided by, by the Tari network itself. In addition of that, <clears throat> uh, the, the whole network is uneasy to shut down because the centralized networks are like a hydra. You need to 
cut all of the heads to, to kill it. So even when the few of the nodes will be put down for any reason, uh, the, the whole system will still uh, remain operational. And with the time when the new uh, nodes appear in the network, the network will become even more uh, um, hard to, to, to shut down. But okay, uh, uh, nothing is perfect. So of course, with pros also came some cons. So let's talk quickly about it. So the first one is related to the Tor itself. Uh, so as you know, between the receiver and the sender, we need to put a three nodes uh, in between to create the circuit. So if any nodes on that circuit would become slow for any reason, for example, it has a temporary problem with the internet connection or it's busy uh, handling other uh, data package, then, uh, then the whole uh, transaction will become a little bit slow, so the messages will come with delay. The second one, it, it, is, it is a flaw, but for some people, it also can be a benefit. So due to the serverless um, nature of this approach, we have no place when we can store the, the message history. So if you lose your access to your device, or you uh, remove the messages manually, or you, or you just want to start over on a different device, you will be no able to restore your message history in any way. And the last one, it's also related to the, to the serverless solution. Uh, so uh, due to lack of the servers, we cannot uh, recover the, uh, your account in any quote unquote normal way. Uh, so you don't expect any button that, that will remind your password and, you, and the link to, your, to the recovery page will appear on your email. Instead of that, you need to, to do the, the same thing like you do when you're restoring your crypto wallet. So you need to write down all your paste phrase, keep it in the safe place, and use it where it's needed. Um, okay, so uh, as you see, we have uh, all tools are available. Uh, it's on the table and within our reach. Now we need only people who will take them and use it. I have a strong uh, feeling that uh, even when the outcome of this work will not be perfect, it will definitely uh, gather some attention, gather some users, maybe even create some community. And by getting a feedback from them, you can scale up this project, um, make it even better, and gather even more attention. And we, as Atari, want to uh, help to build such kind of, uh, of uh, chat application. Maybe we even want to break the trails here. So recently, we released the, um, the framework written in Rust that allows you to send and receive the message over the Atari network. Uh, we are also in the process of implementing that library into our mobile wallet. The, the functionality is already available on iOS as an early beta, and it will be available on Android uh, in the near future. You can download it from here. It's a link to the, to the test flight. And of course, you don't, you don't need to trust me or Brian, but you can trust our code. Our code is open source, and you can, can, can check it by yourself going to, to our GitHub project to, to check what is exactly inside. So yeah, I think that that's all that I have to say today. So thank you all once for listening.